everyone, this is Darwell20, and welcome to episode 35 of Darwell20's Let's Play series, where today I am continuing along the path of mana and artifice. Now, I haven't taken a nap yet, because last episode, uh, we progressed in the mod far enough to reach tier 2, uh, which unlocks a bunch of new spells and abilities for us. However, in order to do that, we need to take a nap. So, I'm gonna go do that. Ah, uh, resting... You advanced to tier two. Hooray! That's cool. There we are. Tier two advancement complete. Now if we look in the uh, Oculus here, it will tell us that we've reached tier two. We need to complete any nine of the following 11 tasks to advance to tier three. So we have to cast a tier two cantrip, complete a tier two ritual, craft a magic broom, craft a mana crystal and a mana crystal fragment, craft a construct with at least three wood or stone parts. I want to check out constructs because they look kind of cool. I feel like they're like golems from Thalmcraft, but I'm not sure. Uh, craft a spell with complexity 35 or more, craft an unfired rune plate, reach magic level 30, rune forge a rune, and rune scribe a rune pattern. Runes I haven't quite understood just yet. I need to look into what runes are really all about. So the other thing I've done is I went ahead and made a spell book, and I'm trying to figure out how to use spell book. Uh, so I've got the spell book, now, how's this thing work? Um, once you start, you'll need a place to carry them all. The spell book spells can be switched by holding Z and selecting a spell from the wheel. How do I add spells to a spell book, though? That is a good question. I assume that that's something I can do, right? Like, I want to put my crystallized spell inside the spell book. Oh, figured it out. You, if you shift click on a block, it's not going to work. So you want to shift click on empty air, and then you can insert your spell books. Cool. And then let's see, options, controls, key, Z by default. Uh, so R is nouveau. I'm going to take that one off. And then, oh, nice. That is cool. I love those kind of overlays. They are literally the best. Cool. Now I have crystallize on there. Sweet. All right, so let's try making a projectile fire spell, because that sounds like a fun time to me. So I've got all kinds of new abilities and spells that we can take a look at now. If we were to look in the spells chapter for sorcery, um, we can also see that we come up with rote spells. Ooh, I want to read about those, because those look neat. As you cast spells, you begin to learn more about their properties and how they work. You can see rote progress for each individual spell part, shapes, components, and modifiers in the Oculus. These parts gain experience at different rates. Once they are rote, you can use them in a book of rote to make spells with single shapes and multiple components. Modifiers that you learn by rote are always available in the rote spells, allowing you to make spells with more components and modifiers than you would normally be able to using the inscription table. There is no crafting process or material cost when making spells in the book of rote. As it represents your memorization of the spell, you simply make the spell you need at the time. So in other words, once we get really good at spells uh, and, and certain components, we can make spells dynamically without having to use the inscribing system anymore. That's kind of cool. I'm very excited about that. Um, and then uh, there's the Book of Rote, which basically I think is how you can cast those spells once you've got them. I don't think we have anything yet. So for example, if we look at, um, at Touch, where do I see? It said I can see the progress of it somewhere. Didn't it say I could see the progress of Rote spells? Um, yeah. In the Oculus. Ah, in the Oculus. Got it. So under Sorcery here, uh, let's see. See Crystallize has a little yellow dot there. So I really need to cast Crystallize a lot before it becomes Rote. So besides unlocking Projectile in Tier 2 and a few more types of spells, we also unlock the first of the first three modifiers. So Damage Modifier, uh, probably you can assume, makes the spell do more damage. But it also makes the spell cost more mana, right? Um, so there's that. There's also uh, range. Alter the formula for a spell to increase its range. Doesn't affect projectiles since the range is more based on their speed than anything else, but I might be able to extend my metaphysical touch range and more, right? Uh, and then speed. Alter the, the speed of a spell so it, you know, certain movement effects happen faster. So what I think I'm going to try is making a projectile spell. That's this guy. I'd like to try... Should we do fire or frost damage? I don't know. Both sound cool. Is there, like, much of a difference between them? I assume fire damage lights the dudes on fire, right? I think that would be obvious, right? Uh, yeah. 
That sounds cool. And then what about frost damage? What does that do? Does that do like some kind of slowing effect? I'd be curious. Drastically lowers the temperature, but the shock from the temperature can change can cause significant damage. So, yeah, let's try it out. Let's see. So if we put fire damage in here, is this going to tell me anything about how much damage it does? Oh, yes, there we go. So five damage and a duration of three. And then if we did frost instead, that's kind of the same deal, right? So I think it's whatever you want. If you want to do fire damage or frost, it doesn't matter. So should we try frost or should we try fire? I don't know. Fire is always fun, right? Fire is kind of always fun. Uh, and then let's do let's do uh, the modifier for damage. So you can see range, speed, delay. I didn't see delay in there, but maybe we already had that one. Damage is the key here, right? So if we want to bump up damage, you'll see it increases uh, that a little bit. That's cool. So damage bumps up, but it obviously costs more uh, stuff here. But I think I can make all these things. I think I can. Yeah, that looks doable. So let's go ahead and scribe this thing. Um, now it's complexity 20 spell, which, you know, not too bad. Out of, out of 40 that's available to me at this point. I'm assuming that'll also bump up over time. So yeah, let's give this one a shot, shall we? So a nice projectile damaging fire spell. Hopefully it'll be pretty powerful and have an arranged attack would be good. You know, um, how many episodes in? 35 and I don't even have a bow. So yeah, it sounds like a good time. So let's go uh, make this ritual happen, shall we? So while I'm here, before I do this, one thing I wanna look at under rituals was, oh look, there's all kinds of new things. Um, metal ritual runes, oh, that's cool. It may be desirable to have a certain rituals not remove their ritual runes when completing. I like the idea of that. Creating the ritual pattern out of metal ritual runes will achieve this goal. Ooh, you don't say. Nice. And then there are rituals that exist to create various elemental motes. There is one ritual or moat for each affinity. Okay, that's cool. I guess we'll figure that out uh, as time goes by. Ritual kits, I was also interested in. Uh, and then there's several more rituals that we have access to, which I'm definitely interested in finding uh, more info about. But I think the metal ritual runes would be a good time, right? So rather than having to redraw our spell infusing runes all the time, we'll use this. So let's get these metal ritual runes. Does that sound like a plan? Uh, so we need rune scribing, I think, for that. Uh, unfired rune plates. Rune scribing table and rune pattern ritual metal. All right, let's let's uh, let's look into rune scribing a little bit because that I don't know a whole lot about, right? So rune scribing, the first step in any endeavor to create magical runes. Yeah, let's go inside for this. It's getting dark. Not that mobs spawn around here, but you know. Um, is to scribe the pattern. Take a blank pattern to your rune scribing table along with your rune smith's hammer and chisel. Using these tools, chisel out the desired pattern of the rune. Take care when chiseling your pattern as any mistake will require starting over completely. Aha, all right, cool. So we need that, 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 and that. Then rune smithing runes. So rune scribing makes the pattern and rune smithing. The next step is in the overall enchanting process is to actually forge your rune from your pattern. Once you have your completed rune pattern, you will need to take it and some superheated vintium to your runic anvil. Place the pattern on the anvil and the superheated vintium on top. Cool. Um, take your runesmith's hammer and begin to strike items on the anvil. Be careful to have everything set up correctly or the items will not fit together properly and they will pop off the anvil. Once you hit the item enough times, your forging will be complete. The next step will be to take your rune to your mana weaving altar to put the enchantment on the rune. Okay, cool. Uh, making blank plates. In order to rune scribe, I'll need to first make a blank plate. I should be able to make out uh, make one out of clay uh, with a few runes embedded in it. After that, I can fire it in the rune forge to make it able to be scribed. Okay, cool. Uh, superheating Ventium. Regular furnaces don't seem to put out the right kind of heat to superheat Ventium bars. That's where the rune forge is useful. By placing these bars in the rune forge, it's magically infused fire will cause these bars to heat up to temperatures I need in order to forge them into the shape. Okay, cool. So basically, Ventium goes in, superheated Ventium comes out. Good deal. Uh, then there's purified Ventium bars, which is just a crafting recipe, it looks like. And then there's um, some other stuff. So rune, metal, ritual rune. This rune pattern is used to create permanent runes for rituals. That's what I want, right? So I think we need to make the rune pattern ritual, and then using superheated Ventium, 
and we have to hit it 10 times with the hammer. Is that what it's saying? Then I'll get my rune ritual. That sounds cool. All right, let's give this a shot because it looks pretty straightforward. So first things first, rune scribing. We want the rune scribing table, right? Um, <clears throat> so, and then we're also going to want some unfired rune plates. So I kind of need to figure this out because I'm not. So there's this, there's this, the hammer and chisel. We need those guys, right? And uh, rune smithing table. So we have most of what we need. We need another wizard chalk, a unused one for that matter, and then a bowl. Easy peasy. And then bada bing, bada boom. Cool. Uh, there's just so many cool things here. Look at that. Nice. Oh, that's so cool. All right. And then you guys can go in here. And then, so that's that. Just take a blank pattern to your rune scribing table along with your rune smith's hammer. So there's the rune pattern and then the unfired rune plate. So do I have to fire it first? That I'm not clear on. It does say unfired rune plate for this part. So let's do that. So let's make an unfired rune plate. So what we basically just need is you plus some blue, because it doesn't matter, you know, what color we go with. Yeah, so I'm not clear on whether I hit it with the chisel yet or not. This definitely does not fit in here. Okay, so I might need to first make a blank plate. So let's try that. So pop that dude in there, and that'll maybe make a blank plate, and then I etch the rune onto it. Okay, blank plate, good. Aha, now we're cooking. Sweet. So now what? Oh, I see. Oh, look at that. Okay, cool. So then what we want to make is this guy, right? So rune smithing, metal rune. This is the pattern that we want. Interesting. So does that mean we want to, so I feel like it's like here. And just be careful not to make any mistakes. Hey, look, that worked. Nice. Hey, so when you do finish it, it says I'm done and immediately turns into this dude. Nice. So now we've got the pattern for the metal runes. That's cool. That is cool. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. That is super neat. All right. So now we need to get uh, some superheated Ventium. Let's do this, right? What I'm going to do is... Look in here at the ritual for Arcana, right? Crafting spells. So we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, sixteen, and nine there uh, is twenty-five, and four is twenty-nine, thirty-one, thirty-eight, and forty-six. Is that right? Did I have that all up right? I think that's right. I'm curious. Would you be, okay, yeah, you're not gonna be super useful. 150, and you've got, yeah, 46, right? That sounds about right, 46-ish. So does that mean I need 46 Ventium ingots? Let's superheat the 20 that I have, and while they're superheating, I'm suspecting that's what I need to do. Oh, by the way, it looks like 16 is the max items that can go in there once. But let's now get the the, the thing that we had to hit with the hammer. Um, so we made blind plates, we, we rune scribed, now we need to rune smith, right? So for this, we're gonna need the runic anvil. Okay, so I need a regular anvil as part of a crafting component for this. And that should be that, cool. 
I should rearrange this workshop a little bit, but I'm like learning the mod and then I'll, like I said, come up with a building for this. That is a cool looking block, by the way. That is neato. All right, so you're still superheating. I'll come back in a minute when you're done. All right, all set. So then we put this here and then we put this on top. Oh, fancy. That's cool. And then I think we need the hammer. Sweet. All right. And then there's your rune ritual metal. Okay. So that used up the, the pattern. Oh my. Well, that's cool. I feel like that's a lot of work to get all the ritual patterns that I need. Let me see if I missed something there that I don't understand. So my understanding is that I will soon be able to automate this process, I believe, using constructs. Oh yes, there's definitely a lot of constructs going on now that we are in tier two. Oh wow, look at all these things. Cool. Yeah, we're gonna have to take a look at constructs so we can automate this because I'm gonna have to make like 46 of these and no thanks. <laughs> so I'll use chalk to make my projectile fire damage thing first and then we'll use constructs to make the metal runes. Does that sound cool? All right, so let me go ahead and make this guy again. So what we're gonna do is here and then it was something like this. Uh, actually, no, not you two. Yeah, that, right? And then do. I've already memorized the pattern, so that's at least good, right? So you know it's not like too tricky to make because having done this once now, I already kind of remember the pattern and that's pretty cool. So let me get rid of this rain and we'll be right back. All right, so let's make this cool looking spell. So purified Vintium Dust, boom. And now we have a lot of things to make here, right? Now, if you're not sure about any of these things, you can look on the table, um, but you get the idea of what's needed. So let me, I'm gonna get most of this off camera, I think. I think, I think that's, the, that's the way, right? Off camera, I'm gonna be crafting all this stuff. I'll come back when I've got it all together. Sound like a plan? Be right back. All right, I think I've got everything here, right? That looked good, 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 good. Good, good, good. Yes, 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 yes. All the things ready to roll. I think so. Should we try it? All right, so purified Vintium dust indicates that we have everything we need. Man, that is just cool to watch. All right, and now some mana weaving, right? So triangle. I am not a great shape drawer, which is a surprise to no one. A trick that I was told was to maybe try and like draw it on a block face, and that would be cool. So then we need a diamond. So like if you look at a, at a block, that kind of helps. And then another triangle. Nice. Woot! That is cool. Look, you got a nice little fire effect going on in your hand here. Now I can place this in here, and then I can use you to go to projectile fire damage. And that looks cool. Let's go test it out, shall we? Let's go test it out. What should we fire projectiles at? I need a test subject. Oh, cows. Hello, cow. I'm sorry, but I need a test subject and, well, oof. <laughs> yeah, that did some pretty good damage, right? Uh, how many do cows normally have? Nice. So not too shabby. And that's going to help me to level up, right? That is cool. That is cool. I need to be better at shooting, but you get the idea. I bet if I gave it a speed projectile, it would be even better. Right? Wouldn't that be better? Because then it would uh, be a little bit faster to, to run into the entities. That would be cool. <laughs> I love it. Little fire projectiles shooting everywhere. And just casting the spell equals leveling up. Nice. So what do I look like? I'm level 11 up there now? Mana comes back slowly but surely. 
Very slowly but surely at this point. Make sure you have hunger saturation stuff, it said, right? Yeah, look at that. See, it's coming back a lot faster now that my hunger's filled up. Well, I mean, not filled up, but you get the idea. Beautiful. I love it. I love I love mana. I love I love magic. I love magic based mods. Casting spells, super fun. And look, you can see my affinity accumulating on the bottom right for fire. Uh, so real quick note on affinity, you can see in the spell casting section. Basically, as you cast certain classes of spells, you'll build up an affinity for them. There's six of them: air, earth, water, fire. Ender and Arcane, and each affinity has an opposite. So Air and Earth are opposites, Water and Fire are opposites, Arcane and Ender are opposites. Um, so a higher affinity will give mana cost discounts on spells with the same affinity, up to 50% at max, and will also increase the mana cost of spells with the opposing affinity. So because I'm building up an affinity for Fire, it means whenever I cast Fire spells, it will cost less magic, or less mana, right? And uh, if I were, for example, casting... See, what I like about this is it cooks the steak. That's the best part. If I were casting um, water spells right now, it would cost a little bit more mana. Cool? So that's pretty neat. So that's uh, a nice a nice spell. So there's a bunch of other things that we need to do here uh, to, to continue along, right? So I can continue casting my fire spells, which is neat. And that levels me up pretty good. I like that. Nice. So that might have been uh, the next level there. And let's check out in here. So look at that fire damage. We're starting to accumulate that rote thing, right? That's pretty cool. So I have to figure out cantrips because I'm not quite sure what the deal is with them. But to make a, a little bit of progression, we should cast a level two cantrip. So I want to see what the deal is. Cantrips are spells that you can cast using nothing but mana weaving pattern combination. You unlock new cantrips every time you tear up. You can use the cantrip book to set the pattern combinations for your cantrips, minimum of two patterns, and later on even set custom cantrip spells provided they are not channeled. So we need a cantrip book, which is a one of these dudes. So we need two vellum, right? A book and Ventium Dust. And then what we're going to need to do to get the cantrip book is a square and a circle mana weave, okay? So like I said, drawing it on a block space is kind of like the easiest way to get it to work. Like you can just draw it straight up in the air, but that's a pretty good way to go. And then you can see the square and the circle are shown there. And then boom, we've got our cantrip book, neat. All right, so how do you work? Oh my, look at this. This is a thing. My oh my, what is this? That is cool. I have no idea. I have no, we're learning, we're learning. Cool. Um, so you can use the cantrip book to set the pattern combinations for your cantrips, minimum of two patterns, and later on even set custom ones. Casting cantrips. To cast a cantrip, first you'll need a mana weaver's wand. Equip that and draw the first pattern using normal mana weaving. It will appear in the air once complete. Next, draw the second pattern. Once complete, it will merge with the first. Once a cantrip pattern is matched, you will hear a tone and see an icon with a countdown bar. For cantrips that must be aimed, such as spells, it will target and cast where you are looking. Okay, kind of get it? Kind of get it? Ooh, warding candles, that's new. Oh, forbidden creature spawns, nice. All right, uh, sorry, got distracted. Uh, combining patterns. Duh, 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 duh. So I guess what we want to do, there's cantrips. Is there a cantrip thing? Mana weave patterns are here. Is there a cantrip thing in here? I don't see anything about cantrips particularly, but let's check out the cantrip book. So square and triangle. I don't know what that does. Square and triangle. Let's uh, Let's cast it. Square and triangle. What did that do? I don't know. I don't know what that did. <laughs> oh, oh, well, that's that's cool. Okay. How about circle, upside down, triangle, triangle? 
circle, uh, upside down triangle. That is not what I drew. Circle. See, drawing it on the blocks is definitely easier. Circle, upside down triangle. I do have upside down triangle as a, there we go. And then triangle. Now was I too slow? Oh no, we got the raven. I don't know what that, oh, it says coming soon. Okay, interesting. Cast a tier two cantrip. I'm not quite sure what cantrips are all about. So this is the equivalent of a touch fire spell. Uh, so if I had an entity nearby, it would, you know, touch fire them. And this is not implemented yet, but it's going to be a cool thing. Got it. All right. So I, I get how that works now. Neat. So I don't think I need cantrips right now because mana weaving is tricky. So I don't think I'd want to be doing that just yet. Uh, I prefer much, obviously, the, the fire. Yeah, that's much cooler. All right, so let's look and do maybe a tier two ritual. So what rituals are available now that we've uh, unlocked in tier two? Uh, ritual of Ancient Stone. Coalesces the elements of earth and nature into an essence. Well, that's interesting. Um, turn night into day. This forbidden ritual summons a demon lord. These demons often offer power to those that seek it, though with power always comes a price. Demons are very powerful and respect only those that can withstand such power. Proper precautions should be taken before attempting to make a bargain with a demon, lest the summoner find themselves burned alive. This includes both protections as well as having an offering of a moat of fire to offer the demon. Allying oneself with such entities will most assuredly make enemies of others. I don't know if I want to do that. That sounds like a bad time, right? I don't know that we want to be doing either of those things. That sounds like a really bad idea. Ritual of the Deep Ocean coalesces the elements of water and the deep sea into an essence. This ritual can only be performed while in an ocean biome. Oh, that's cool. All right. So I think that's how you get the moats, maybe? Yeah. That's how you get these moats. And these moats might be needed for crafting components. Okay. Ritual of the Endless Void. That, I assume, gets you a moat. Uh, fairy courts. This forbidden ritual summons a fairy queen. Though bargains, through bargains, the fae often offer power to those that seek it. Uh, though with power always comes a price. An offering of a moat of air is usually a good bet. Allying oneself with such entities will almost assuredly make enemies of others. That's cool. Ritual of the Flatlands. This very powerful magic allows a mage to mark out an area using special runes of marking, then perform the ritual close to the marked location within about 60 meters or so of either of the marked points. The magic will stream out of the ritual and carve out the marked location, destroying trees, plants, dirt, rocks, ores, and more. Each of the two runes of marking uh, marks the opposite corners of a cube to target. It seems the only basic blocks are affected by the spell and not anything like chests, furnaces, or the other. So no tile entities. There are rumors that no mage has been able to make this ritual function on an area larger than 48 meters or so. Any larger just seems to consume the materials and then quickly implode upon itself. Conversely, any dimension smaller than 3 meters also seems to have the same effect. Interesting. That's kind of cool. I like that. Forgotten lore. Ah, the ritual coalesces the elements of knowledge and study into an essence. This ritual must be done by placing enough bookshelves anywhere along the ritual's outer border. Oh, I think 10 should do the trick. That's cool. I'm not quite sure what it does, though. Searing Inferno coalesces fire elements. Has to be done in the nether. Okay. Untamed Wind. That makes you air essences. And Ritual of the Wizards Council. This ritual summons a conclave from the ancient council of wizards. By doing so, you are offering to align yourself with the council in exchange for access to their knowledge of higher magics. Once you have summoned the council, stand in the center of them to receive their blessing, if you believe you are worthy. Allying oneself with such entities will almost assuredly make up enemies of others. That's cool. So I think if we look in the basics section, there's a factions chapter. Um, and at a certain point in your journey through the world of the arcane, you will need to choose a faction. This is given to you as a choice of a series of rituals to complete. Choose wisely. Your faction, once chosen, cannot be changed. You will also make enemies of the other two factions, causing them to send your, their assassins after you. These assassins are very dangerous, and you should make sure you have protective measures before joining a faction. Raids will become more dangerous as you advance in level and tier. So there's the Demons of the Nether. That's one faction. 
Uh, the Demons of the Nether have a focus on all-out offense. Their relics include items such as the Hellfire Staff, which can power up a fire spell attached to it, the Ember Glow Bracelet, which protects you from fire and makes your attacks ignite enemies, and spell components such as Explosion and Cauterize. When looking at the Oculus, anything requiring the Demons faction will be marked with the following icon. Aha! That's cool. I did see that icon on some of the spells or, or similar icons, and I was like, what are these little icons about? That's neat. Yeah, so there you go. Tier 4, Explosion, Nethergate, Cauterize, Absorption, Fire Shield, Life Tap. That's cool. That's cool. Then your other factions are, I assume, the Fairies. Yes. The Courts of the Fae have a focus on subterfuge and trickery. Their relics include items such as the Spectral Elytra, which is an enchanted elytra that uses mana to fly, the Bracelet of Trickery, which makes you invisible while sneaking and causes sneak punches to send your target flying, and spell components such as Decoy and Heal. When looking at the Oculus, anything requiring the Fae faction will be marked with this symbol. Um, and then there's the Ancient Council of Wizards. Uh, have a focus on defense and mana manipulation. Their relics include items such as the Arcane Crown, which gives you a bonus mana and can dispel harmful effects automatically. The Leyline Bracelet, which causes you to absorb nearby lay energy to reduce mana costs while spell casting, and spell components such as shield and mana transfer. When looking at the Oculus, anything requiring the cancel will be marked with that. That's cool. So basically, using a Tier 2 Ritual, you can summon uh, one of those members of those three factions and align yourself with that faction and that means the other two factions will be hostile to you and will send uh enemies at you by way of like raids that's kind of neat so i'm going to check out another thing here mana crystals i think under artifice because that's going to knock out a couple requirements here uh the other thing i want to look at is constructs but i'm thinking we're going to wait till the next episode to look at constructs because they look really cool and they look like they can do a lot of things, and I might want to check them out and maybe even use them for a new tree farm. We will see, though. I'm not sure. But constructs, to me, look like kind of like golems, right? Um, yeah. Sided inventory automation. Animated constructs are humanoid-shaped constructs that have been imbued with magic in order to automate them, animate them to a semblance of life. Making the parts. That's cool. That is neato. Uh, let's see, where were we? Animated constructs. Ah, oh, that's cool. It looks like there's a lot of things here, right? This looks pretty complicated, so I'm going to have to look into constructs a lot. Um, the Lodestar is a way to set up advanced logic for your constructs. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's cool. All right, yeah, there's so much to look at in this mod. Man and Artifice just has, like, a ton of stuff, and I really need to wrap my head around it a little bit better to really understand how it all works. But um, let's look at Mana Crystals first. By combining several Mana Crystal fragments together, I figured out how to way to make larger crystals similar to the old ones of old. This looks cool. So I'm going to need eight Mana Crystal fragments. And a moat of magic. Okay. Uh, and then mana crystal fragments. This enchanted crystal can act as a reserve of mana. By changing the mode, sneak and use between input and output, I can either store mana at times where I have plenty or retrieve mana in a pinch when I need it. Sweet. Uh, so for that, we're going to need chimerite gems and some purified ventium dust. Do I have any of those chimerite gems yet? I may or may not. I have to remember where to get those from. I think that they're not available until I hit this chapter, right? Um, that might be under basics. Chimera. I can't believe it's been under my nose this whole time. A hidden magical ore that I mistook for excess bits of rocks when mining other valuable ores. I call it Chimera because it can look just like mining debris until one's magical senses are honed to be able to detect it. It's easiest to find an emerald ore, something to do with the structure of emeralds themselves. Most mages will be able to sense these with only a little bit of magical experience. Probably mages, they're at least level 5. Hey, that's me. Next are diamonds. While not as easy to, as emeralds, Chimera can be found here by mages with a little bit more experience above level 10. I think I'm... I think I'm above level 10. I'm like 14-ish, right? Yeah, definitely. Well, now I'm 15-ish, so take that. Um, nice. 
Uh, lastly is coal. Chimera is technically there in trace elements, but it takes a finely tuned magical mind to pick up the traces that are large enough to be usable. I would say no mage under level 20 would see it. On that point, I should also note that Chimera is also often destroyed as part of the mining process and isn't always retrievable from every mining attempt. Emeralds seem to have the best success rate here, followed by diamonds and then again coal. Nice. So if I bump myself up to level 20-ish by casting a few more fire spells, uh, I should be able to find some Chimera if I go mining real quick, which I think I'm going to do, right? Um, let's snag our quantum bag and go mining for a little bit deep down underground where I'm going to look for some diamonds and stuff. So I'll be back in a minute after a smidgen of diamond mining. All right, I think I'm almost level 20 now. Yep. So that means I should be able to detect Chimera rarely in coal. Uh, it's pretty dark where I'm at, but you can see I'm just mining it up. Oh yeah, I'm definitely getting Chimera from coal now. Nice. How do we got? Ah, uh, 39? That should... Mm, I needed eight of them per tiny gem, right? Isn't that right? Isn't that what it was? For Chimera mana crystal fragments? Yeah, we need eight of them. And So if we want to make the, the mana crystal itself, then what we're going to want is at least a stack. So we'll probably want a little bit more than a stack of Chimera. But yeah, being level 20 is the way to go. Uh, definitely, for sure. I mean, diamonds, obviously, you're going to get some, too, which, you know, never hurts up a few more diamonds. But uh, now we can at least get it from coal. So I will continue mining and be right back. All right. So we've got a bunch of chimeric crystals here now. So we want to make these little mana dudes, right? The mana crystal fragments. And now in the center of that, we're going to need purified ventium dust, which, re refresh my memory, the purified isn't too bad, but that's the one that needs flowers, right? Yeah, it's not terrible i'm not gonna worry too much about that so um oops wrong that's not the book i want this is the book i want so that is just a shapeless recipe in the this dude and we're gonna need circle diamond square diamond cool so we're gonna want a to you and one of you and then circle oh, diamond it was kind of a diamond. What can I say? I'm bad at this. Square diamond. Now, for those of you who, like me, are bad at drawing this, there is a block that will draw it for you. I just haven't made one yet. There we go. And that should be a mantle crystal fragment. Sweet. And now that, mode infusion. So if I sneak right click, he becomes mode supplement. Sneak right click, mode infusion. Okay. Explain. So I'm assuming, is there some kind of data value I can see on here? Durability 1 out of 250. So he's in infusion mode. How do I get him filled up with mana? I just assumed it would like charge itself, but maybe I need to have like enough hunger. So how do these work? So many books in this mod. Um, mana Crystal Fragment. By changing the mode between input and output, I can either store mana at times where I have plenty or retrieve mana in a pinch when I need it. Yeah. Yeah. So store. Store already, would you? Maybe I have to hold it? I think I have to hold it? Oh, hold right click. Oh. Okay. So holding right click, see my mana bar at the top left? It's draining mana out of my character and storing it in the gem. Okay, cool. That's neat. Nice. The crystal is full. Okay. Sweet. So I'm assuming I need eight of those in order to make the next bit. So real quick, I just want to see what's involved. Because I'm bad at this mana weaving, I'd like to check out the mana weave projector. For those wizards that are either unable or unwilling to draw a mana weave pattern manually, they can craft a mana weave projector. These devices, when placed, will draw mana from players within two blocks. When full, it will have drawn 100 mana. Activating the block when full will cause it to emit the current pattern. Activating the block with a mana weave pattern recipe scrap will change the pattern that is emitted. Cool. So mana weave pattern recipe scrap. I guess. Villager trades? So here's the deal. Oh boy, I did not mean to do that. Dire please. 
So what I was saying is the mana weave altar is the job block to turn a villager into a mana weaving villager. So that would be, let's make you one. Hmm. Hello, sweet. A turnum and and decto. I don't get it really. Man. Is that the pattern on the symbol there? Interesting. Ah, there's the connection. These these are the names of the shapes. Got it. Got it. I was wondering that, because, uh, you know, it has this thing on here. I wasn't sure what that deal is, but those are the names of the shapes. Got it. Okay. So let's go back to our villager now. Uh, so what I'm looking for is Orbis Quadratum. That's the square. Inverse triangulo. That's cool. Uh huh. Aeternum. I guess I'll get Adnecto, right? Are you going to be, like, all kinds of cool and level up now, or do I have to, like, buy a whole bunch more from you? Hmm, he says. Hmm. How about you? What do you got? Anything good? Eh, not really. I guess I could burn a few diamonds, right? So, yeah. You know what I could do? Can I unjob block you now that you've already been traded with? I don't think so, because I already picked up the mana weaving altar. Right? So once he levels up, I guess I can't turn him back into a normal villager. Any more normal villagers in this village? Because I'd like to have some of the... Uh, I'd like to, to cycle his trades, but I don't think I can do that now that... Now that he's that already already stuck as that type, right? Believe that to be true. But what I could do is remove your job blocks from you guys, right? That might work. Or I could just go find another villager. That would work too. Because I think there's several other villages nearby. Yeah, let's head due east. Due west. Due west. Even though it's getting a little bit late. I think it's getting a little bit late for the video, too. But we could pop over to here. Now, are you already a villager type? You are. You're a brewer. But if I break this block, is that D? No, not really. He decides he still wants to stay as a brewing stand guy. Vanilla mechanics. You know me. I'm not good at them. An armorer. A pressure mechanic. That's cool from Pneumaticraft. All right, that's nifty. Huh. Okay, yeah, you. Become one of these guys. What do you mean, no? Oh, it's late, isn't it? Isn't there certain times of day these guys can do jobs? Is that the problem? Be that. Oh, I think he's behaving. Hey, you, come here. Uh, Horarium and Inverse Triangulo. Yeah, no, I didn't want either of those. So what I'm going to do is break and then replace. Come on. Do the thing. Be the guy. Trying to figure out why you're being weird about this. Oh, did you turn into a librarian? Yes, because this is here. There you go. That's what's up. Orbis. Yeah, that's what I want, isn't it? Do I already have Orbis? I don't already have Orbis. Nice. Hey, don't steal my emeralds, buddy. Did he steal my emeralds? Did they drop on the ground and he stole them? That is rude. 
Inventory issues abound, but still, very rude, sir. Very, very rude. I don't come to your house and steal your emeralds. Though I might, in a moment. Oh, no, wait, he didn't steal them. They're just there. <laughs> nice. All right, well, that was close. I was worried about that for a minute. I have inventory issues, which is not uncommon for me. Okay, good. Yeah, no, they just magneted it in my inventory. All right, that's better. Uh, I guess I don't need this bucket. And that should be cool. All right, let's go home and inventory clean up. For a minute there, it totally looked like he stole my, my emeralds, which was rude. So Orbis and Quadratum are the ones that I'm going to need. I don't think we got a, a Damus, which is the diamond. But let's just try this out, because I'm curious to see how this thing works. Um, so mana and artifice, and we're definitely getting towards the end of the episode here, but I really just want to try this thing out, and then we'll wrap up. Deal? Uh, so what I wanted to make was a mana weave projector, which looks cool. Oh man, I need more obsidian. Uh, and I dropped my bucket. We can get one piece of obsidian really easily. There you go. Easy peasy. Wonder if I could easily add obsidian to my to my auto thingy, but probably not. So if I want you to automatically draw a circle for me, what I would do is I'd come over here, I would do that, see how my man is filling up the thing? Then I'd click you with the pattern, that circle. So now when I want you to craft a, cast a circle, right, which is one of the ones for mana crystal fragment, it is circle, diamond, square, diamond, right? So, So then I can just click you. Does he draw? Oh, look at that. Yeah, look, he drew the circle for me. Nice. Okay, so that's a way to do that a little bit uh, easier. Sweet. So I'm gonna wrap up the episode here. We'll come back next time and we'll play a little bit more with this mod because I'm having fun with it, right? I'm working on a mana crystal right now, but I definitely wanna look at constructs because I want to see how those work. If we could make a tree farm with constructs, that would be fun. Right? Considering our current tree farm is not so tree farmy, right? Um, so let's see, mana weaver. Yeah, that's what I want. Another mana weaving wand. Because I used the one I had for that. And then it was diamond square diamond. Is that right? Pretty sure that's right. All right, so double 20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Yeah, diamond square diamond. We'll come back next time and check out constructs, which seem super cool. And diamond's the one I'm terrible at drawing at, but that's the one pattern I didn't find yet, so. We'll figure it out. All right, guys. Take it easy.